Good morning and welcome to the Monday Market Update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 21st of October 2019 and the time has just gone 10.15 British summer time. And it's been a reasonably positive start to the European stock market session. Um, we're seeing equity markets ever so slightly higher. Fortunately, volatility is very, very low and things are likely to be quiet today because we've had no, you know, no, no major economic indicators. Out of, the, out of Europe today and none are on the horizon and it's all focused on Brexit. Um, in relation to, can, in the next 48 hours uh, we're going to find out whether Boris Johnson, the Prime Minister of the UK, can get the deal that he brokered with the European Union passed in the House of Commons and that is essentially going to be the focus um, of the next 48 hours as far as the financial markets are concerned. And particularly here in the UK um, there was a bit of optimism um, there's a fair bit of optimism uh, last week. We saw a decent move higher in the, in the British pound. And the, the major volatility we saw in Sturdy last week has been replaced by low volatility this week. Uh, things are, are fairly quiet. Uh, but this morning, the British pound has already traded above 130. Um, we're, we're not we just ever so slightly 130 against the, the US dollar, dollar, that is. It's also gained ground against the euro and the, uh, the Jap Japanese yen. It's, volatility is a bit low, but essentially that's going to be the focus. And... For the time being, the financial markets seem to be a bit optimistic that in the, in the next 48 hours, Mr. Johnson can get that can, can, can get that deal approved. Um, that's basically the, the kind of the big the big kind of focus of, of the next day or so. Touching on what happened at the back end of the last week, stock markets uh, in the US had a, had a very sizable reasonable sell off uh, on Friday afternoon. We had some negative stories from a couple of big companies um, such as Johnson and Johnson and also Boeing. But we also heard announced last Friday. That on um, this week on Thursday, uh, U.S. Vice President Mike Pence um, will give a speech in relation to China, and Mr. Pence is known to be quite a hawk uh, when it comes to China. So there's a fear that um, Mr. Pence will be kind of wheeled out to be the kind of you know take a tough line with China. Uh, keep in mind, um, we're now in late October. In mid, in, de in December, the United States is set to increase tariffs. Um, set, 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 set to introduce tariffs. Um, on, on Chinese imports, and that is going to be the, the kind of the, the, like the next phase of the U.S.-China trade talks. So traders are, are, are fearful that Mr. Pence could be drafted in to take a tough stance in advance uh, and kind of you know let the kind of the next round of kind of negotiations I guess, set, 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 set the scene, set the tone for the next round of negotiations. What I'll do now is I'll take a quick look at the weekend article. We could run through that, and then after that, I'll, run, I'll take a look at some of the major markets. The weekend article can be found on our website. If you go to cmcmarkets.com and under insights, and under news analysis, you can find it. Uh, so looking ahead, uh, looking ahead to tomorrow, we have a uh, German IFO basis climate numbers. Uh, we have third quarter numbers from Metro Bank here in the UK on Wednesday. Third quarter figures from Boeing. Uh, on Wednesday, as, as, as I said at the start of this video, Boeing had a, 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 a quite a negative day. On Friday, just gone, there was um, there was uh, updates from the company which was suggest that, that employees of the company uh, deliberately misled the, uh, the the aviation regulator in, uh, in relation to the uh, the safety of the, uh, the the Boeing 737 Max aircraft. Uh, first quarter figures from Microsoft are due out on Wednesday. On Thursday, here in the UK, Royal Bank of Scotland will, will, will produce its third quarter numbers. On Thursday, we have a flash manufacturing um, PMI, flash PMIs uh, from Germany and France. That's going to be closely watched, uh, considering that given what's going on in the state uh, of the Eurozone economy, the most recent manufacturing figures from Germany points that the sector has, has uh, had a, at, at its lowest level in 10 years. And keep in mind, Germany is the powerhouse of Europe. Uh, ECB meeting on Thursday. Uh, on, on on Thursday we also have the third quarter figures from Amazon, and on fr on Friday we have third quarter figures from Barclays here in the UK. I'll uh, start off this week um, in terms of charts with, with the British pound versus US dollar. Like I said this this morning, only only uh, only a while ago, uh, the British pound traded north of 130 against the US dollar. So if we take a look at the price action, so. Ever since late September, decent move to the upside, so the higher high, the higher low, and the higher high. So in a firm upward trend uh, in, in the pound dollar. If you take a look at the MACD histogram, the MACD, uh, the MACD indicator, we can see the steady rise in positive momentum. So the upward move in the pound versus the, versus the, 
the dollar be confirmed by the steady increase in momentum. And if you manage to press on high, if you know, if you get if you get back above 130, and if you can hold above 130, uh, the next area to keep an eye for to the upside uh, could be this area here, uh, a level last seen in early May, and the high of that uh, is comes into play in one spot 31.78. If you do, on the other hand, uh, manage to kind of drift lower on the, the British pound versus the US dollar, we could be looking at heading back down toward this zone here, this big consolidation in a 128, and if you go below that. This red line, the truly moving average, one spot 27.15, could uh, collect a support. Or if you have a fairly sizable correction, we could head back down towards this zone here in at one spot 26. So, uh, I take a look now what's going on with the euro versus the US dollar. So since early October, we've seen a fairly decent move to the upside in the euro versus US dollar. The steady increase in positive momentum suggests that the momentum is with the buyers. If we do press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting this red line here, the truly moving average, which comes into play just north of 1 spot 12 and the 1 spot 12 or 7. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking at targeting this area here, uh, the highs of early August in around 1 spot, 1 spot 12.49. Uh, if we do manage to kind of drift a bit lower and, and uh, have a pullback, then this 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 zone here in around one spot 11 10 one spot 11, one spot 11 this area here could act as support and if we drop all that uh, the support potentially can be found from this blue line here the 50 day moving average and we can see on the qualifications recently it acted as uh, resistance so it's possible that old resistance could become new support and that comes into play in at one one spot 10 34 as I mentioned um, European equity markets are a touch higher this morning, um, a, little, a little bit optimistic in relation to Brexit, but they're not, uh, players aren't getting ahead of themselves. Um, if we take a look here at the FTSE 100, we can see that uh, after the, the multi-month lows that were achieved um, in October, um, we fell back to a level last seen uh, in February, we can see here that the market has been pressing higher, but keep on this red line here, the truly moving average. It's, um, it failed on a couple of occasions to get above that, so it seems that that, that region for the time being is acting as resistance. And while we remain south of it, it's likely we could, it's possible we could see a uh, further move to the downside. Notice how on a few occasions the eternity moving average will act as resistance here, but act as support here and here. So, and it's acted as resistance here, so it's, like, it's looking like it, that this metric could be important to keep an eye, keep an eye on for in the, in the near term. If we do manage to kind of keep a load and we do manage to kind of turn over on that yet again, we could be looking at retesting the kind of 7,000 metric. Um, but you know, on the same side, if we do manage to you know get back above, you know, push higher, and uh, and move back above the 2 moving average, it could then potentially be act as support, and it could then use be kind of a, as a uh, jumping off point for further moves higher, and it could target this 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 area here at uh, 7,440 or even up to this is out here. 7,470. So that, that area could be uh, the next area of resistance. Should we manage to get a press on higher from here and retake the 200 day moving average? Taking a look at what's going on over in Germany, uh, keep in mind <coughs> on the back of um, the, on the back of the, well, the optimism in relation to Brexit pushed the British pound uh, much higher last week, which had softened the, the euro. So a combination of a soft euro and the and hopes in relation to Brexit being sorted out, held the DAX at a level uh, not, not seen for, for over a year. So we're still very much in that upward trend um, on, the, on, the, on the DAX. And if you hold above this zone here in around 12,600, uh, it's likely we could see further gains being made in the, uh, in the DAX. And if you press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting this zone here in around 12,887. And if if we do have a bit of move to the downside, and if we take out 12,600, this zone here in around in around 12,500 could act as support. And if we do manage to kind of press on that lower from there, in, in around the kind of 12,300 zone, may act as a support again. But um, keep in mind we have, we have had a fairly decent move throughout uh, the month of October, so it's been a while since we've seen a, a size of up. Um, pullback, so this we, we could be in the uh, it could be uh, in the outfit for one. Should things not go as planned, in uh, uh, should things not go as smoothly as Boris Johnson wants them to go in relation to Brexit. 
take a look now at the uh, US the, the, the Dow Jones US markets are in good shape they're not in amazing shape but they're in very good shape uh, the broader view for the US markets is if you take a look at the price actions since August we've seen all the lows along there have been getting higher so the market the market, so the, the trend is to the upside uh, and if, if you can manage to get a, essentially hold above the 50 moving average this blue line here if you can hold above that it's likely we could um, continue in, in the wider more positive move and we could be looking at retail if we can we look at retesting this zone here north of 20, 27,000 in around 27,000 kind of 100 in around here and if we go beyond that we could be looking at targeting the, uh, the September highs in around 27,300 there thereabouts and then if we go beyond that we could be looking at testing uh, the all-time highs um, like I said US markets are not too far away from their all-time highs so they are a good shape but I'm just a bit concerned at the highs of September failed to take out the highs of July and the high and what we've seen so far in October the highs of October so far have failed to take out the highs of September so we you, you know an upper trend is, is defined as a series of higher highs and higher lows we're seeing higher lows but we're not seeing higher highs um, so just be wary of that so we could be we could be in potential for for a kind of period of consolidation, we may not always kind of move because it's in a in very kind of classic upward trends. But the but the uh, the wider view is still is still positive, and even if you do manage to um, drop below the 50 moving average, support could be found in around say 26,400. There has been previously a bit of consolidation in that area, and if you go below that, this red line, the 30 moving average, could act as support in at 26,130. Take a look now at the at the uh, S and P 500. Fairly similar situation, whereby since August, by and by and large, the lows we we've, we've seen have been higher. So the markets, you know, and it's comfortably above its 50-day moving average. This blue line here. So things are looking quite positive. <clears throat> but once again, the highs that we witnessed in October didn't take out the highs of September, and the highs we saw in September didn't take out the all-time highs that were achieved in July. But nonetheless. The broader upper trend is still in place. So if we do manage to press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting 3,000, big psychological number, and then if you go beyond that, up around 3,020, 3,022, the kind of the highest ever achieved uh, last month. Moving to the downside, support could be found for this blue line here, the 50 moving average, and that comes into play in around 2,948. Uh, and if you, it's only really if you have a size of break below that, cause then you can start to think, oh wait, maybe maybe we're heading back down towards uh, the lows in, uh, in mid October in around 2,880 odd. Take a look now at what's going on on the um, the gold market. So the wider view is still very much to the upside. Since August, we've had a phenomenal rally in the gold market. It went on to achieve a six-year high. In September so the wider trend is still clearly to the upside but if you take a look at the price action since September we've had a lower low a lower high a lower low a lower high and we're still we're now sitting trading sideways but if you do manage to take out this level here that would be another lower low and that, that would kind of suggest that we're kind of in for further decline so if you hold below this line here the, uh, the blue line the 50 moving average uh, which comes into play at 15.06. If you hold below that, it's likely we could see a, a potential for the pressure to continue pressure in the gold. We could see it retest the, uh, the, the October lows in around 14.60, and a break below 14.60 would take would you know be another lower low, and it could suggest we're heading back down towards this zone down around here in around 14.50, 14.53 to kind of 14.30, this sort of zone. If on the other hand, if you imagine you're going to press on higher. Retake 1500, get back above the uh, the 50 moving average, keep on I think then we could be looking at retesting the early October high at 1520, and then going beyond that, it could be looking at targeting the late September high in around 1535, and then if that's the case, then we could be looking at retesting the highs of early September. Quickly, have a take a look at the oil market before we uh, wrap things up. Taking a look at WTI first of all. This is the price action um, over the last month. It's been very much to the downside in the wake. So we had the jolt higher in the, in the immediate wake of the uh, um, the Saudi the Saudi um, the drone strikes in Saudi Arabia. But since then we've had a slight move to the downside in the oil market. 
now it is worth pointing out that um, we're well off the we're off we're clearly off the lows of October, and we do appear to be kind of edging higher a bit. We have seen you know a, you know higher highs and higher lows, but it's very much in the downward trend. So if we do manage to kind of continue on the press on higher from here, we could be looking at retesting um, the 100 moving average, which comes into play at 55, it's about 63. We can see it recently acted as a resistance on a few occasions, so it might act as a resistance in the near term again. I move beyond that, could take us up towards the 20 moving average just north of $57, and then move beyond that, could take us up towards this zone here, it'll become a 58. But we can't really ignore the kind of wider downward trend, so if we do manage to get a press on lower from here, we could, and if you do manage to get a uh, push lower, we could be looking at retesting uh, well, the, the, the mid October lows in around this area here. In around uh, 51 spot 41, and below that could take us back down towards the early October lows, just north of 51 itself. And then if we go below that, we could be looking at targeting psychology, the psychologically important 50 bucks level. It's a fairly similar uh, chart on Brent. We had an aggressive sell-off um, since mid, mid September, on, and similar situation whereby this candle here, the, the long wick in it. Uh, Company with kind of looking back in hindsight appears to be a hammer formation. So we have seen the market kind of press on higher from there, and we've seen higher highs and higher lows, but we're still you know holding below the 50 moving average, so the outlook still isn't particularly good. But if you can continue to creep on higher and we manage to retake the 50 moving average, we could be looking at heading back up towards uh, this red line here, the 20 moving average. We can see there's quite a bit of consolidation in around it previously. Uh, and that comes into play at 64 spot 77. And a move beyond that could take us up, up towards um, the mid September high of in it, 65 spot 79. But if you could continue to hold below the 50 moving average, it's a possibility that the market could turn the over on itself yet again and look to retest the, um, the early October lows in at 56 spot 71. Uh, well, that's all from me this week. Um, tune in next week. Thank you very much.